This video is going to be about using the loft NURBS object to create uh, a model. So for this exercise we're going to create uh, a whiskey bottle. So this is a couple of photographs I took of a bullet rye whiskey bottle. So we've got a front view here, put on a plane, and a side view, put on a plane. Uh, and I've got those in a separate layer. So I'm going to go ahead and lock those. And they are not rendered. So right now if I render I don't see anything. So the loft nerves object works by stacking splines together, and you can find that right here under loft nerves. Well, I'm not going to create one just now. I'm going to start off by actually creating splines. Uh, since this is an elliptical object, I'm going to start off with a circle. Um, and right off the bat, you can see that it's much too large and that's in the wrong direction, so let's change that to x z, so it's lying on that plane. And let's start off just by scaling. Try to look at a nice front view. And we'll just scale this down so that it comes close to the width of the base of that bottle. And that'll be our first circle. Uh, I'm not going to worry about the fact that it's wider in one direction than it is in the other. Uh, right now I've got it. Uh, the shallow, the shorter direction is Z, and um, the wider direction is the X. Uh, because I want to stack up a series of circles until I get to the uh, opening of the mouth of the bottle, since the mouth of the bottle is a circle. And then we'll go ahead and expand the dimensions of the rest of the bottle after we get that far. So to start with, if you try to scale an object in any one direction, like if I just try to scale it in the z direction, uh, it's not going to do that. It's going to do it in both the z and the x direction. And the reason for that is that the object is still editable. And you can tell by the appearance of the um, icon next to it. So if I hit C or click this button right here, it converts the parametric object to an editable object. So now it's an editable spline. Uh, so if I do scale it now, it scales it in only the directions I scale it in. Well, like I said, I do want to go ahead and keep that um, as a circle right now. So let's look again at that front view. Uh, so the, the beginning of the object will be that circle. I'm going to copy and paste. I'm going to move that up just a little bit. And this will create that subtle um, roundness at the base eventually. Okay, so I want those pretty close together. I'm going to put another one, let's do like four throughout the bottle. So I'll do another one about right here, another one about here. And then the last one I want to do at this size, I want to have just as the object starts to taper smaller. So you can see it starts to bend in a little smaller right here. And we want to sort of do a cross section or a slice throughout the object as it changes. So I'm going to go up now, um, this, on this one I'm going to go ahead and scale it down so that it's approximating the size of that bottle there. Copy, paste again, and again uh, we'll scale this down with the size of the neck. And let's zoom in just a little bit. Copy paste again. So, like I said, the way the left nerves object works is it's going to connect all of these objects together into one shape. So, I'm simply looking at this object overall and trying to uh, decide where I think the best placement for a cross section would be if I were to connect dots in space. So, copying and pasting. Now, this one I'm going to make quite a bit larger to show that change in the shape of the uh, mouth, and then we'll go up and make the top of the mouth here. Zoom out the tab so we can see this. So this is about where the top of the mouth is going to be. This isn't perfect, my image is a little skewed, uh, but this should work fine as an example. I might come in and shrink these down just a tad. Let's see. Let's 
So I'm going to scale those just in the x and z dimensions just a little Just in the x and z dimensions a little bit. Okay, oh, that's better to me. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so right now, if I were to create a uh, loft nerved object and stick all of these splines in there, let's, let's do that and we'll see what's going to happen. This down. There we go. So, under the hypernerved object, you can see loft nerves. I'm simply going to shift click on all of these and drag them into that object. You can see immediately we've got something that looks pretty close to like an absolute vodka bottle or something like that. It's very round. You're not getting the dimensional difference that this bottle has. But it does look like a bottle. Uh, a couple things that are kind of strange that are happening is we've got this flatness at the bottom. So you see this sharp flatness. One of the things we can do to fix that is actually just scale in this bottom piece a little bit. And then take the second one and move it down just a little bit. And then you see we get that um, rounding that automatically happens. So you can see that what the locked nerves object is doing is looking between each of these uh, cross sections that we've given it. And it's creating a, a nerves surface. So nerves stands for non rational, non uniform rational B spline. Um, and as it's creating this nerve sur nerves surface, uh, it's really looking between each shape that you've given it and trying to figure out how to connect those shapes together. Uh, you see what we've got on the top right here is really not that wonderful. So we've got the outside of our model. Let's make the inside. I'm going to uncheck uh, the check mark here by the lost nerves, lost nerves, so it's uh, no longer showing me the object. Now I'm simply going to select all of these except the bottom one. And I'm going to copy and paste those. And then place them in there. Okay, so that should do it, right? Let's turn it on. Now what has happened? Our bottle looks very strange now. Not at all like it should. Well, what has happened actually is the way the lost nerve works is that it stacks from the bottom so the very first spline object is stacking from this one to this one to this one to this one, connecting those dots. So what happened when I simply copied and paste, uh, now it's trying to go from this one all the way back down to this one, and then stacking them together again. We don't want us to do that. So I have to reverse the order here. So I'm going to drag this 10 down, this 9, until I reverse that order. You can already see that it's changing. We're starting to get the opening of our bottle, right? So, six, five, four, two, and one. That's great. Now, the bottle still looks paper thin right now. And the reason for that is we haven't done anything except for actually copy these rings on top of each other. I want to take that last set. And I'm going to scale it in the x and z dimension so that it gives the bottle a thickness. So we're creating the inside of the bottle now. Turn this back on, and you can see that it actually has done that. So now we have a lip to our bottle. And the more I scale that inward in that x z direction, the thicker the glass becomes. So we need to really focus on this and try to figure out how thick that glass should be. You can see it has that nice rounded top that looks like a glass bottle. Now let's uh, take care of that thinner dimension. So we've got a wide and the X. We need to make the Z a little bit more shallow. Uh, it only needs to be more shallow from here down to the bottom. So what I'm going to do is use the rectangle selection select all of my splines in that direction, look at my side view, and I'm simply going to scale in that direction until I approximate that. So we'll look back. So now we've got a bottle that's narrow in one dimension, wide in the other, 
looks very much like that bullet rye bottle in shape and size. I think we could come in here and uh, adjust a couple things just by scaling down these last couple overall to give it that sort of tapered look at the bottom. I might come in and select some of these. Just to give it that sort of wider appearance it has at the top. So the bottle feels like it's getting wider as it goes up. Okay.